The fourth idea here is that living in God's presence happens when the person surrenders to God's will. Like Paul said in Acts 9-6, Lord, what do you want me to do? Living according to God's will always make you, makes you feel his presence. Ask him, what shall I do now? What should I do with myself? What should I do with this person or that person? What should I do concerning this matter or that matter? This is living according to his will. Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. Whoever lives like that reaches this constant presence. The Corinthians once mocked St. Paul saying that he, was, that he was just all talk. This was a little hurtful to him because he was their father. They said that St. Paul promised something that he did not fulfill. Paul said to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 1.17, I was planning this. Did I, not, did I do it lightly? Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh? What he's saying is that, do you think when I said I'm coming that I'm just saying empty words? I do not make a single move or say a word without asking, Lord, should I go to them? And the Lord tells me, go, my son, do this, do that. St. Paul revealed that he was not light at all, not in decisions, not in words. He never made a decision or said something without God. He did not do things spontaneously or randomly. He kept his eyes on God to maintain his open relationship with him. That's why St. Paul lived at the height of prayer. Some of the Holy Fathers would ask a confusing question about the balance between prayer, works, and mercy. These are the topics belonging to tranquil people. They ask whether they can take from the prayer time to serve people, or is that not right? This is a very advanced level for us. We are still at the level of talking about sins. Even at that high spiritual level, all they busied themselves with was, what does God want from me at this moment? Even if he tells me not to pray and to go to serve someone, then that's the right thing. If God wanted them to help someone and they continued praying, they would lose the blessing because they did not do what God wanted. Or if God told them to pray and they went and served their brother, likewise, they would lose the blessing because God said pray. They wanted to be programmed to the millimeter. They wanted to not do anything, even if it was spiritual, according to their own mood. The Virgin Mary was always in God's presence. She had never done anything or moved from a place to another without God telling her to do so. She was speaking, praying, or eating by his permission. She went to Egypt by his command and came back from Egypt by his command. Her greatness is in the slogan she lived by when she said, Whatever he says to you, do it. I am the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Whatever you say, I will follow. So she was living in a continuous state of prayer, a constant presence of God. She was always fulfilled by the Lord. In the Beatitudes it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, Matthew 5, 6. Meaning, the one who craves God goes and prays. He fills himself. And how about those who are merciful and serve others, like in Matthew 5, 7? And those who make peace, Matthew 5, 9? How do we know which one we should do now? Each one of these beatitudes could take a day or a lifetime. The Holy Spirit is the maestro who adjusts all of them and tells us which one we should be doing now to do His will at all times. So you listen to God when you ask Him what to do now. He may tell you to pray and apologize to people. Another time, you may, you may say, what to do now? I want to do the midnight praises. And he may say, no, my beloved, leave the praises for now. Your neighbor is very weary. He may ask you to leave your prayer and go help someone. The saints live as normal people, but the difference is that they are guided by God in everything they do. They sleep, eat, and see people, but everything they do is according to God's will. They do nothing outside of his divine purpose.